All right, so I'm going to do a quick overview of how to do really basic head rotations. Um, it's not a whole head turn. This is more of just a head rotation. Since uh, this is an older project that I did, so a lot of some things done here I, I would do differently. But this is just for a quick a quick idea that might help might help with head turns. So what we have here is there's a, a little girl's head bobbing around. And um, she's rotating quite a bit, uh, not tons. I think she breaks at about three quarters, but there's some there's some decent movement happening in there. You can see her ears are moving, her entire face is distorting a little bit. Her eyes are moving realistically. The back of her hair is. The only thing that's not working great is the the bangs, and it's it again. I would do this differently now, but uh, the bangs I treated more manually, which was a real. A real pain. I, I would do it more like uh, I do cloth now, like in the previous tutorial I did. So uh, let's have a look at how this little character works. Um, essentially, the the it's it's a bit of a trick because she's not actually a flat face. Um, I've actually pulled her features off, and I have a little null object that is a face center and called face center and I'm rotating and moving that all around so it's when her head is moving it's actually all her little parts are spaced out in such a way that it gives the illusion that she has a round head um, and I just had to be very careful in how I picked my camera and the the lens angle so that the features look looked good if I were to change this camera, which I've locked for a specific reason, because if I changed the zoom or anything like that, it would change the way her her features were spaced out on her face. So I had to pick my camera first, and then I spaced the features out so that they looked the way I wanted them to. Uh, the other thing, so uh, yeah, as you can see, it's all it's built very dimensionally. Um, the other thing I did too is when the head's rotating, I created a distortion on the head base. So let's just see if we can see this here. So I have this head, this head here. Um, this is the the shape of her head, and I have I've built in a distortion with the distortion mesh, and the distortion mesh is just this really basic grid. And I I made it so that it could rotate left and right, or gave the illusion of rotating left and right. So I made this a, com a composition. Okay, so I made that a composition, and then I put that comp, drop that, drop that comp in behind her head. And at the time I did it, everything was just flat on, so I could easily see it. But I put that behind there. The the head here, the the face, the face animation, the where it's shifting in perspective is linked to the rotation of the face center. So right here I have time remap equals time remap plus the face rotation value and then I then I uh, you know, divided it by negative 25 just to to make the intensity of it much 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 less. Um, if it was a one-to-one -one relationship the animation would have moved too much. So if I if I take this off, let's just take off the divided minus 25 and see what it does. So now you see that the the head animation executes so quickly that it actually just flips right from one side of the face to the other, which is not what I want. So divided by negative 25, and that value I just came up with by experimenting with it until it was it was doing what I wanted. It, there, it, there's no real magic to it. It was just a bit of experimentation. Um, yeah, so that's essentially how her head works. Uh, the other thing I have here is eyes. I didn't do the eyes quite the way I do them now, um, but I did treat the blink similarly. As you can see, she has this blink happening. And what I've built for the blink is a little slider, a little control slider for her blinking. Um, let's enable the did you switches. So there's a slider for her blinking, which opens her eyes and closes them. and um, as as she opens and closes her eyes, her, her eyebrows go up and down. I just found she looked a little better when she blinked and her whole eyebrows moved a little bit. As you can see, I can blink them wherever I want. And because they're, no, they're parented to this three-dimensional treatment, I don't have to, you know, um, grab new eyes or, or reposition the eyes. They just, 
they take care of themselves. So you can see they're moving around here and I can blink them. So the way a blink works, again, is very, very similar to the way I did the head, dis the head distortion. Uh, if we just go back to the camera. Um, I'm gonna go into her eyes here. So I have head, um, where are her eyes? Her pupil controls, let's make sure everything's here. Oh, here they are. Okay, so I have an eye. So essentially the way the eyes work is, it's just a nested composition. Let's turn this up to full. And it's just an animated eye layer that I've painted. Okay, and they're just a number of holes, the opacity. So I turn them on and off depending on how I need them. And this is just one timeline. So I have a full, full close and full up. Okay, so now when I go back to the composition, all I've done with this eye is I've, if we look at the code, is I've enabled time remapping. And it's really just directly linked to. So time remap is directly equal to the value of the slider. So that's essentially how the eyes work. It's a really quick look at the way you can rotate a face and have some nested compositions that can control some expressions. Uh, again, I'm going to go. I'm going to try to do a tutorial that has a little more in-depth look at how to do more sophisticated character facial animation. Uh, and including a little bit of lip syncing. This this particular style worked really well for this, the character I was doing at the time, which she was really simple, little cutout character, and having just a limited amount of dimension worked really well. I do have some distortions and and other things happening to her mouth as well. As her as her face rotates down her mouth actually squashes so there's there's a mesh warp again attached to the head rotation right here the face center and as the X rotation increases the mouth changes ever so slightly the distance between this little shadow under her lip and her mouth changes so ever so slightly and again it's limited because I can break it eventually. I could only go so far before it broke and then what I really should be doing is having a different a different head and I was just trying to avoid that. Um, as for the hair distortions which aren't really working to make them interactive I would do them just like I did the cloth now and I would actually attach I would create a timeline just like the shape of the head for the hair that would be affected by the rotation of the of the head. So here I have the distortion mesh of the head being affected by the rotation value. I don't have the hair doing that. So I had to go back in after I animated the character and re and then do all the, the all the mesh warping for her hair and it's it was a little bit of a nightmare. So that's why I, like in the cloth tutorial, I really am trying to automate as much of that stuff as possible. All right. So there you go.